Oh, and welcome to another episode with me, HJG White from eToro. Investing in the stock market is easy. I know you've probably heard people say that, and I'm also pretty sure that you don't believe it. However, lots of people get started in the stock market for the wrong reasons or they have the wrong expectations, and this sets a lot of investors up for failure. So how should you get started in the stock market? In this video, I'm going to guide you through your first five stock market investments with the goal of making sure that you actually make money in the stock market and the second goal of trying to ensure that you do not lose money. And then third, all the while trying to make sure that you are buying things that you actually use day to day and understand. Step one of this process is you need to pick a trading platform. What brokerage does simply is acts as a middleman between you and the business that you are buying shares of. I don't wanna make things too complicated, so think of it like this. If you bought a can of Coca-Cola, you don't buy this can from Coca-Cola, you buy this can from Tesco's. So again, if you want to buy Coca-Cola shares, you don't buy them from Coca-Cola, you buy them from a site like eToro. Today, there is so much more choice than when I began investing for beginner investors. So while I'm gonna be using eToro today, there are also really great platforms in the UK, such as Trading212 and Free Trade and Robinhood in the US. These are all my favorites, but they all pretty much do the same thing. And unlike Tesco's and Sainsbury's, when they sell Coca-Cola shares, they provide them almost exactly the same price. So if you're a beginner investor, do not waste too much time on this decision. Do yourself a favor and just pick one. Once you've decided which platform you want to use, we can move on to step two, which is deciding how much money to add to your account. All you need to get started investing on eToro is $50. This is because the minimum amount eToro will let you buy a share for is $50. So in this video, as we're gonna be buying five different investments, we want to add around $250 to our account to get started. Now, once we've done this, we can move on to step three, which is picking your investments. What you need to decide now is whether you're going to be a passive investor, that's someone who pretty much never looks at their stocks or just looks at them randomly, or an active investor, that's someone who checks their stocks their stock portfolio pretty much daily and also looks at every quarterly financials report. For this video, I'm gonna be assuming that you are a passive investor. For passive investors, it's better to buy a pool of stocks than individual ones. Let's go back to the Tesco analogy. You want to buy some chocolate for a friend, but you don't know what they like. So you could buy them a random chocolate bar, but if they don't like double deckers, you're kind of screwed. So what you could instead do is buy a box of celebrations. The box has a mixture of different chocolates. They probably won't like all of them, but there's guaranteed to be some chocolates in there that they do absolutely love. That is an index fund. There are many index funds out there, but perhaps the best known and best performing index fund is the VU. This tracks the 500 largest companies in America. So first, to keep life simple, let's buy VU. Simply go to the search bar and type V double O. Then you'll be brought to the stocks page and you can click trade. Simply type $50, then make sure that the leverage is zero, then make sure that you have no stop loss and no take profit, and then click buy. Assuming you follow all those steps correctly, you should now be able to go over to your portfolio and see your $50 trade in there. One of the reasons you might not see that is if the markets are currently closed. So markets are generally open between specific times. For the VU, they should be open at a, in, in the UK time, uh, they'll be open from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. So just watch out for that. It might, the money will, potentially be in your order bin waiting for the market to open. So if you make a trade and the market isn't open, what eToro will do is wait until the market's open and then buy the stock. Next, I think the index fund that you should buy is either the country that you live in or the country that you admire. So if you think Dubai is doing really well economically, that could be a country that you want to invest in. I myself live in the UK, so I myself might want to invest in the UK 100. This is called the FTSE. If you don't know what your country's index fund is called, you can usually find it in a 30 second Google search. So now I've got the Vua Fantastic Index Fund and we've also got an index fund for your home country or country that you really admire. So what you can do is buy three more index funds if you like, or we can buy three individual stocks. Most of the time people start buying stocks is when they see that their mate has just made a thousand percent on Nvidia. 
So their exposure to the stock market is usually quite peculiar. So they're buying something like Palantir or a biotech company or Tesla, and they don't really understand why they're buying these companies. Rather than buying something that they use day to day and actually understand, like Coca-Cola or McDonald's. One of the books I love is by Peter Lynch, One Up on Wall Street. And what he talks about is actually us as individual investors actually have an advantage over Wall Street. And that's because we are the ones that are walking down the street and experiencing the changes in the high street in consumer spending uh, day to day. And we actually have an advantage because we use these products day to day. So what we're gonna do before we start looking at the value of companies is write a list of five to 10 businesses, five to 10 companies that we use day to day that we really, really like. You might love your Levi jeans or your Volkswagen car or your Coca-Cola with lunch, or maybe you get your meal deal every day at Tesco's or you go to lunch at Greg's. Basically write down all these businesses that you use today, uh, use day to day, and then write down whether you think they are good, whether they are great, or whether they are incredible. The reason that we are doing this before we start looking at the value of the companies is because we are obviously more willing to pay more money for an incredible business than a good one. Now that we've written this list, before we buy the stocks, we need to check for three things. So number one is we need to check that this is a public company or it's owned by a public company. Number two, we need to check that this company is priced fairly. And then number three, we need to check that the debt of the business is reasonable. So the top of my list, a company that I love is Crocs. I got a pair for Christmas about two years ago, and ever since I've been wearing them daily and I've bought two more pairs since. So I absolutely love this business. So the next thing I want to do is, I don't know if it's a public company, so I'll go to eToro, I'll click on the search bar, and I'll type Crocs, and voila, there it is. The next thing I want to do is check if it's priced fairly. So what you want to look at is the price to earnings. So this takes the price of one share and divides it by the earnings per share from the last year. So I'd say for a good company, a fair price is five to 10. For a great company, a fair price is 10 to 20. And for an incredible company, a fair price is 20 to 30. And I generally ignore any companies that are priced above 30. Plenty of great investors do buy stocks above a price to earnings of 30, but as we are trying to be passive investors today, we aren't gonna to be touching any stocks above that price to earnings because that will have too much risk for us. So when we look at the price to earnings of stocks, we can see that the price to earnings is 10. So we have what I would consider an incredible business that should be priced between 20 and 30, priced at 10. So I think that this stock is incredibly good value based on the price to earnings. So we can move on to the final check, the third check, which is the debt. And as we scroll down, we click on balance sheet. That is where information about how much debt the company has is kept. And we can see that actually it has over 100% leverage. Now having a high debt to equity ratio does not mean the stock is high risk, but as we are not being trying to be active investors today, we don't want to be doing loads of analysis on this debt to determine how risky it is. It's much safer and easier as a passive investor to just avoid companies that have a debt to equity ratio above 100%. Therefore, for you guys today, we've got to give this company a miss. Next up is a company that my girlfriend loves, which is Birkenstock. She wears these shoes all the time. She loves them almost as much as I love my Crocs. However, when we search Birkenstock at the top and we go to the stats page and we look and we do our second check, which is on the price to earnings, uh, the price to earnings of Birkenstock is 90. So this is absurd. They're expecting Birkenstock to perform three times as well as Apple. This is incredibly risky for two main reasons. It means even if the earnings grow incredibly well, we still might not see the share price go up that much. And then the second thing is if the earnings do poorly, then actually so much growth is priced into the business that we could actually lose a lot of money when the share price goes down as a result. Next up is a company that me and my girlfriend both love, which is Coca-Cola. So first we've got to do our first check, which is check it's a limited company. We go to the search bar, we type Coca-Cola, and we can see that their ticker is KO. We click on the stock page, and then we go to the stats, and we look at the price to earnings, and we can see that the price to earnings are 23. So this is the public company with a price to earnings of 23. We scroll down and we look at the balance sheet and we can see that they have a debt to equity ratio of 93, which is high, but well under 100%. 
Another advantage to Coca-Cola is if you scroll to the top of the, stat, uh, the stats page and look at the dividends, you can see that the yield is 3%. So if you invested $100 into the business, every year you would get $3 simply as a thank you for holding the shares. All right, guys, and hopefully gals, now it's time for you to work through your own list of companies. So write down your five to 10 companies, then run through these three steps. Let me know in the comment section what you bought, and I'll try to give my thoughts on all the comments. And yeah, uh, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. And also, if you really want to be rich, you've got to do this.